Hey folks, it's your boy Adlertag, and welcome back to another episode of DCS Filmmaker School. Um, just to get it out of the way, uh, some of you may have noticed I was gone actually for a couple of weeks. There was a big time lapse in between the last video and this one, and that was due to me going on vacation for a couple of weeks and then getting a new editing computer and then transferring everything over to my computer, and then when all that was done, DCS dropped a couple of major updates with the Hind and Cyprus and the Marianas um, Islands, so I've been using that time to get everything back up to speed, but we are good to go now. Um, for those of you who have already subscribed and have been following, thank you for coming back and and for those of you who are new, um, basically the idea here is that as an independent filmmaker, I'm just trying to share some of the techniques and thoughts and ideas that go into making an independent film and sort of translating them into making DCS videos. So thank you and welcome. And please remember to hit the subscribe and give it a like if you find anything that I have to say useful. So in this episode, what we're going to be talking about is is light and the importance it has in your DCS video. It's a subject that often gets overlooked by most DCS filmmakers, at least I feel it does, um, but it's really something you can factor in and you can actually use it to your advantage um, when it comes to you know, conveying a look or a mood or a feel. Um, people just underestimate its importance but it is very important to the overall look and feel that your video is going to be putting out there so um, again this isn't going to be a super super deep dive um, you can take a whole college level courses on just learning the ins and outs of lighting directing you know being a lighting director um, and cinematographer um, this is just going to basically touch on the basic concepts that it, even indie filmmakers um, tend to have to be aware of when putting together a film and how we can apply them in DCS. So without further ado, let's get started. The importance of light in film cannot be overstated. It's right up there with camera angles and dialogue and editing. It's super, super important. There is a reason why directors and cinematographers will come up with elaborate plans or schedule entire shooting days around the available light or will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more, on artificial lighting setups so that they can control the light. There's a reason why photographers and filmmakers both use the term golden hour and it's all about the light. Um, in DCS we tend to not focus so much on light as an applicable tool in our video creation but we should. Let's take a look at uh, three ways that light is used in Hollywood films and how that can translate to our DCS videos. So one of the ways that light is used in film is to direct the viewer's attention within a scene. We've all seen a movie where the character is going through a dark environment and inevitably you will see from their perspective their flashlight going back and forth and your eye will naturally be drawn to the brightest part in the scene and therefore will follow that light. Um, it's a technique used by many, many directors in many, many films. And it's something that we can, if we chose to, apply to DCS. If you want to see a better example of what I'm talking about, just take a look at this scene from the recent film, The Tomorrow War. God damn, that thing is ugly. But the aesthetics of the creature aside, you probably did the same thing I did, which is what most people did, which was your eyes immediately focused in on the bright spot created by the flashlight and you followed it up as the flashlight moved up and eventually landed on the creature, even though 80% of the frame was already there. And actually, if you even go back and look and pause it, you can see that even the tentacle was already out 
and moving around before the flashlight got to it. But you probably didn't notice it because you were transfixed on that spot of light. Hence the director directing the viewer's attention within the scene. All right, so let's move on to the second way light is used in film. So the second way that light often gets used in motion pictures is to set the mood of a scene. And this one probably requires the least amount of exc explanation and most people are familiar with it. It's the simple idea, um, for instance, a darker scene is usually implies a sense of tension, uneasiness, uh, you're frightened, hence horror movies, everything tends to be rather dark, whereas the brighter and lighter your scene is, the more relaxed and serene and comfortable you feel uh, viewing such a scene. So I'm just going to put up a real quick example. If you watch the following scene, it's from The Lord of the Rings, um, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. And you'll see how he uses light and, and dark to sort of enhance the mood that he's going for with the scene. The darker the scene, the more uneasy and nervous you feel. And once you're supposed to feel a little bit more at ease, he increases the amount of light within the scene. So let's take a look at it. So there you have it. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. The light and versus dark is used to set the mood of the scene. Um, Frodo's nervous when he first comes home. It's dark, dimly lit. Eventually we find out that it's Gandalf and we can be a little bit more relaxed and then you get that warm, orange, bright lights. So that's uh, one way how directors use light to set a mood. So let's move on to the third and final way that light's used in film. Okay, so the third way that Hollywood tends to use light in film is as a supporting element for a specific genre of film. Um, as you see on screen, the first example that comes to mind is anything that's film noir tends to be black and white and very high contrast. Um, another thing would be horror films tend to be all very dark for the majority of the film. It's not necessarily to say that every scene has to be dark, but they tend to be that way. And that's because the light or absence thereof is being used as an element to support that particular genre. Um, let's take a look at um, the film adaptation of Frank Miller's Sin city and you can see how this was put to good effect to get that film noir look he's got the drop on him he's got squat he's dead he's just too damn dumb to know it So those are the three major ways that uh, major motion pictures and indie filmmakers use light and dark to as a tool in their filmmaking. Um, the third one really isn't that applicable to DCS um, as far as supporting a genre goes, unless you're flying the Warbirds and you wanted it to look like World War II footage, you might black and white and, and grunge everything up. Um, otherwise, that one really doesn't apply. The first two, however, do apply, um, and that is to use light and dark uh, to direct your viewer's attention and using light and dark to support a mood that you're trying to convey. Um, as an example of this, I'm going to show you a couple of clips from a video I did for my unit's rotary uh, squadron. Um, we put together a recruiting video and I used these techniques of light and dark to sort of focus the viewer's attention as well as to sort of set this tense mood. So let's go ahead and take a look at those clips and then uh, we'll take it, we'll move on from there. So 
So as you saw there, what I did was I used light, or rather the absence of light, the darkness, to support and enhance the mood that the music was putting off, that sense of foreboding, tension, anxiety. Um, at the same time, what I also did was I used the brightness and color of the navigation lights and anti-collision lights, instrumentation lights, etc., to direct the viewer's attention within the frame. So so that you were constantly looking where I was hoping you would be looking. So those are using two of the three methods in a DCS video. So now you're probably asking, okay Adler, well how do I control the lights and so on and so forth within my video? Um, luckily ED has given us something that as an uh, independent filmmaker uh, we wish we had and as, as I'm sure Hollywood directors feel the same way um, and that is we can control the sun, which is our main source of light in any video. So let's take a look at how to do that within DCS. Okay, so most of you are probably already aware of how to do this, but for those of you who may not know, first you would open up DCS and then you would select the mission editor. Once you get to the mission editor, you'll be prompted to select your coalitions and what map you want to use. Once you do that, you'll be presented with a screen similar to what you see on screen right now. And that's going to be your mission editing screen. After you place all your static objects or aircraft or helicopters, whatever vehicles in there, you will notice that the fifth icon down on the left, it's the second one under the MIS, which is your like mission specific uh, section, it looks like a little cloud. You're going to click on that because that is the weather option. Once you click on the weather option, it'll bring up the time and weather panel. And for our purposes here, what we're concerned with are the first two options, the date and the time. You can set the time, obviously, anytime with, you know, throughout the day. Um, it does operate on a 24 hour clock. So be aware you don't want to put like 1.30 p.m. You might want to put 13.30. Um, and you can also set the date. The date comes into play because based on the season, we'll determine the height of the sun in the sky um, relative to the location that you're at. So those two things allow us to control the lighting within our DCS video. Um, my standard practice is when I'm making a video for my unit and a person is creating um, basically a mission that we're gonna use for filming, I always tell them do not set it for June 21st, 2016 at noon. That it, that's DCS's default, but it's just ugly. The lighting is just bright and things get blown out and you lose a lot of details and shadows look ugly. Um, so I will usually try to direct them to adjust the time closer to golden hour. And for those who are wondering what golden hour is, here's the brief definition of golden hour. Okay, so as a final example of the, the importance that light plays in your DCS film, the following examples were all shot using the Marianas map on June 21st, 2016. The only thing that I changed in each of these was the time. One of them is shot at high noon, one of them is shot during the morning golden hour of 6.30 a.m. and one of them is shot in the afternoon golden hour of 6.30 p.m. Other than that, they're the same. I tried to keep the angles of the shots the same too. You can look at them and see the difference and um, the only thing that changed was the light. So obviously light is going to be an important part of your DCS filmmaking. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully now you understand the importance of light in the filmmaking process and more specifically how light can be a tool that you as a DCS video maker use to improve or enhance your 
uh, videos. Um, yeah, so I think that pretty much covers this one. So on that note, without dragging this out too much longer, if you have any ideas, thoughts, suggestions, or even questions, um, or even if you want to tell me, hey, Adler, your video sucked, um, feel free to leave a comment in the comments below. I do read them, and I try to respond to them as quickly as possible. Also, um, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, and if possible, to subscribe because um, it just helps the video be seen by more people and if you want also hit the notification so you'll know when the next episode comes out um, that's pretty much it and I want to thank everybody for sticking around and it was good to get this video out and I'll have another one for you soon until then this is your boy Adler Tag and I will see you in the skies